Hello, everyone. My name is Jacqueline Turka. And today, I'm going to talk about how you utilize language at home. First off, you have to define what language is. Language is a way for humans to communicate with one another. We develop bonds through language. We use terminology and signs, and there is a certain structure within language. Language is for expressive purposes in terms of expressing your thoughts or ideas, your feelings, your emotions. It's how we share with other people. We do that through language. It includes expression, in terms of your sadness, grief, you can use it for celebration purposes. Language is also for expressing your wants and needs. It's how we communicate with others. We let people know what we need, what we feel, and what we want. Language is also used for comprehension and for explaining things holistically. It's used for labeling, for explaining uh, things that took place, events, for example, people as well. You can use language to talk about objects. You can express your opinion through language. Your perception on things can be expressed through language. There is not one universally accepted definition of language. There are a variety of things associated with language. There hasn't been research. There's research, but however, there's not an agreement. There's not a universal definition in regards to that. So with that, it is hard to explain language, since there's so many different usages of language. Uh, and there's not continuity on what language actually means. How can you use language on a daily basis? People use language for, again, many reasons. One being communication, to connect with others. They use it for expressing their wants and needs. For example, if you want something to eat, or you need to eat, it can be something very simple. You want to apply for a job, for example, or you have uh, the idea of needing to work. Language is used for all those things I just mentioned in terms of wants and needs. Also, language is used for labeling our world, things that take place within our world. Language uh, can be used formally, for exa example, in the academic setting, where you need to use a higher form of language. It can also be used informally, for example, at your home, in a social setting. Both situations require language, one being the formal or the teaching approach, and then you have language acquisition uh, in the other settings, such as home, and you're exposed to language in that setting. Language is used for bonding with people. When one is learning language, it is learned through many different ways. First off, it's done informally. This means it's learned through socialization, through school, with your friends, and interacting with people. And there are different ways that you use language through sign and term. It's not a formal teaching situation. It happens in your daily life, through the people that you meet, through your experiences. It's, you're not formally taught. Let me give you an example. When you're talking about slang, 
you learn that through others, not your teacher. Again, you learn through your friends and through socializing with others, people that use words and idioms. You acquire the language in that way. And again, that is not formal teaching. It is informal language acquisition. Now, when it comes to formally being taught a language, that's done through the school, classroom. Teacher will explain how to utilize language, how to use sign language, how to use your expressions. That would be considered a formal setting. This includes college as well, and your parents. They too explain how to use language. They make corrections when necessary. They give the right terminology that should be used in any given situation. Those are all examples of formal lessons, if you will. It is explained to you. You give the reasons why you utilize language, why you use certain terms in certain context. All of that is considered to be more formal acquisition of a language. Others is, the last one is incidental. Children are surrounded by people, uh, and they can be in any given situation, and in that situation they learn incidentally. It can be informally learned, it can be taught as well, but that is all con considered incidental learning. Things that take place in their surroundings, they acquire language in that process in those situations is considered a learning opportunity. For example, in the classroom, one student, for example, raises their hand indicating they don't understand something. The teacher at that point in time will take advantage of that opportunity to explain and make it more clear. Now another scenario, let's say a child is running and slips and cuts their knee. The parents will use that too as a learning opportunity and explain that they need to take care of their knee, that they have to sit back and, and tend to the knee. They'll explain the process for taking care of it, such as putting on a Band-Aid. So they take care of this situation. And in that process, they're teaching language to that child, getting language from the child, and they connect in that fashion. Now let me take a minute to talk about how to use language at home in your own home environment. I'm not talking about school. We're strictly looking at the home environment. What takes place in your daily life with your child? They're not in school the entire day. They are at home during the weekends, during the summer, in the evenings. And with that, you have a lot of time with your child. Now I'm going to give you an example how you can actually use more language with your child. It can take place during breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Use that time to engage your child, interact with your child. Uh, maybe have them cook with your child. You can read the recipe and use that as a teachable moment. And again, during that process, you're labeling things in the recipe. Maybe we could have a food tasting, and you can say whether you like something or not. But all of those situations, you are using language. You could take advantage of it during bath time. Kids might be playing with the toys or with the soap or puppets, and you can talk about opposites such as dry, wet, cold, warm. Again, there are so many opportunities when you're just interacting with your child. You can teach them. You can model for them. Again, you can do this during bath time or when they're brushing their teeth, teeth or the bedtime routine. There's so many different ways that you can use and teach language to your child. You don't want to just make it so simple when it comes to bath time. Put them in the bath. OK, time to put your pajamas on. OK, time for bed. No, no, no. You want to encourage and foster a conversation with your child and model that. Some, it might be short, absolutely, at night or in the morning. That's fine. But still take advantage of that time to talk with your child. Use language with your child. You can use it during playtime. That's a fun time. Absolutely. And again, engage your child. Have some turn taking. Talk about rules of a game, for example. Teach the concepts of winning and losing and accepting a loss. Uh, it's how to win graciously. It can just be short and simple. You could do things with colors. Label colors on the game. It doesn't have to be anything too extravagant. You can make it all simple. 
You could use strategies. Um, if it is complex, you can talk about techniques when playing a game. You could have imaginative play. Uh, you could play house, for example. Maybe you become the sister or she becomes the mother or incorporate dolls in such playtime and have the dolls interacting with one another. And they can use their imagination that perhaps a doll wants to go to the movie and then the other doll responds with, no, I'd rather ride a bike. So you can model how language is used and through play. You use that language to model the play. There are uh, other things uh, that kids love. I mean, you can be creative, for example, on the playground. You could take your child to the park. For example, if the child's on the slide, don't just simply say, oh, that's the slide. The slide can actually become something else. Be creative in that way. Another idea is that you could have the playground become something else, could become the water, for example. So just be creative during playtime. There's so many options when it comes to that. And use that time to explain language and play with the language. And as a result, your child will acquire that language through the process. I do have a sample of uh, language learning and experience, and it has to do with cooking. Do you need help? Each take one. Here you go. OK, and place it carefully in the tin here. So this is a paper cup. Paper. Again, paper cup. We don't want to not have that in there, because if we do that, what could happen? It would get hot. It would be hot. And it would get sticky. And we don't want that to happen, so the paper cup will take care of that. And then when they're done, you peel it off. Okay, stir it. Right, so we have to stir it. What's this, girls? What is this? It's a bowl. We stir. There you go. It is a bowl. OK, in that clip that you just watched, you saw a woman explaining about the paper liners and what they're used for in the cooking process. Many kids don't have a clue when it comes to that. They just see it as making muffins or cupcakes. That's all they're thinking of. They don't understand why the paper is there and what the purpose is. And really, it's to prevent the cake mix or muffin mix sticking to the bottom. They just go along and go about their business just making the recipe. Those experiences are extremely important and have value. And at the same time, you can use those experiences to expand and explain the importance of the cup liner. Those little opportunities, it gets the child to think and improves upon their analytical skills. And they need to use language to understand things. And now in this scenario, they're understanding the purpose of the cup liners and how important they are. Now, language learners you have to talk about immersion. If someone is signing all day long, they are exposed to that language. You have to immerse the child in the language all day long, every day. And you don't just give them bits and pieces. It has to be a continuous thing with friends, family members. It's difficult. I can appreciate that. But you need to find the opportunities for immersion. It can be maybe one, two, three hours. It can be an entire week. But it can be certain times that you can immerse the child. You can have it with deaf adults, deaf peers. Have the child socialize with people that use the language. It is a good opportunity for language acquisition, is that immersion piece. They are exposed to a variety of different pieces of language. It's an opportunity for experience and for them to try things. Like that clip that you saw with the cooking. But it's not just that. You have to let the child experience things and let them struggle in the process. I struggle as well, but you need to allow that to happen. And as a result, they'll develop the language through that experience. 
and they will make the appropriate adaptations in terms of how to appropriately communicate and bond with others and do that fluently. And also, it allows them to increase their experiences. They understand things. They understand things more clearly, and you need to applaud them for that. You need to have both positive and negative experiences for that to happen. Now, when it comes to the deaf child, they have to, must, have many opportunities in terms of utilizing language. Now, not just terminology, you know, one sign or word at a time. I am talking about explaining to the child why something bothers me, for example. You have to elaborate on that idea. Or if some, it's a safety issue, you have to explain why it's not a safety issue. Uh, another example, you got to explain to them, well, well you have eat dinner soon, but you have to, again, expound upon that. You have to give them the opportunity for that child to experience language, not just simple words. It has to be more in-depth and more complex. Now, initially, you will model the language through sign, by signing more or saying more to the child, but as time goes on, the child will start responding. They will start thinking about how they can participate in the conversation. And they will start using more language themselves. Those opportunities that, that I just spoke about need to be meaningful experiences. They have to be intense, in-depth experiences. You just can't go along to get along. When things become more meaningful or more in-depth, the child starts to acquire that and understands it that much better. They'll understand the concepts of when and where to use the language. Every experience is important. For example, bath time. Engage with them then. If you're going to go visit your grandmother, for example, again, another opportunity to use language. You're at the dinner table with the family or out at a restaurant and they need to order food. You can elaborate even on that. You can say, I don't like that because it doesn't make me feel good. Or I love that. That's delicious. Very simple things like that can use language. So keep it in the forefront of your mind that every experience is an opportunity to use language with your child. It can be 24-7. I have more examples for you of when you can actually use language at home. Say you're running errands. You're going to the food store to get some things, and your child can help you make that food list. So you could say, I like that kind of milk, for example, 2% or soy milk. And then you can even expound upon that concept. Uh, you could say, oh, for example, my family prefers soy milk over 2% milk. So you have a conversation about milk. Let's say you're going to get gas. And you have the different types of gas. You have diesel, 85, 86, and 87, and so on. You could have a conversation about that, explaining how the car runs better on 91 as opposed to 85 because there's too much water in that. Whatever the idea is, you can have a conversation about it. You can talk about the windshield. Uh, why, uh, if it's all covered with dead bugs, why you have to explain why you have to clean it off. Another example, say you go to the post office and you put everything in a box to be mailed off. You can demonstrate that to your child, the process of getting something mailed out and elaborate on that. Say, oh, we grandma loves chocolate, remember that? And then even go further. We need a Kleenex for whatever purpose. Regardless of what it is, you teach them the process. How to actually fill it up, tape it off, and talk about they need to know where the, it's heading to. So teach them that you have to put the address on there. So, and then make your way to the post office, but the entire time explaining the whole process of how things work, that you have to pay, you have to get it weighed, things like that. You, you can even use it when traffic is, is a mess. You can take the opportunity to have a conversation with your child and talk about how people are trying to get around traffic. Uh, you can talk about the stop light. Talk about that. You, they need that exposure to comprehend what's in their life. They need to know to do the things that they do. It would help them a lot. Another opportunity, you're watching TV and something is said. And you kind of talk about, oh, predicting what might happen. Oh, they're going to 
uh, kill this person or something's going to happen with the horse. You can have a conversation about the TV show that you're watching. You can talk about cause and effect when an event happens. You can talk about prediction skills and kind of say, oh, I think this is going to happen. Again, have a conversation with your child. And during the commercial break, or if you're watching a movie, you can have a conversation. You can simply pause the movie and talk to your child about what's taking place in the movie thus far. Even if it's a quick summary of what has taken place thus far. Talk about maybe two people are going to be getting married, uh, and maybe another person's mad because they're getting married. So use that time to talk about the movie and expand upon what they had just seen. It's a shared experience between the two of you. Now again, it can start off slowly. It can be maybe if you're driving, you see a bus and you see people departing the bus uh, and explain how they will pull the line uh, to get off or you talk about if it's the airline or how to purchase a ticket for the airline. So engage them in the process of any given situation. So we say we're going to go visit your family member, aunt, uncle, whomever. You talk to them about how you might buy a ticket online. But the key here is involve your child. Think about the different ways that you can have your child participate. Now, when it comes to deaf children, they don't have uh, that incidental learning, or if their parents are talking, they're not able to hear that. Because of that, you have to show them language, have them participate, expose them to language, and that language acquisition will happen. Another example in terms of using language and using language to expand upon concepts, there's different situations that take place in the playground, for example. Use that opportunity to use language in terms of creativity and have that interaction with your child. Or you can explain how to use the equipment on the playground. You can play a game. Again, use that opportunity to engage your child, have a conversation with your child. Here's an example of such thing. National language teaching at a playground. Many young children learn language progressively, and it's important to expose them and expand on topics and explain things to them. Be creative. Play around with the language with the young children. It's very essential. Many kids notice their surroundings, but tend not to actually know what it is. It's important, that, and it takes time, and have your patience to expose them to the language and pull that language from them, ask them questions. Mm -hmm. Have a dialogue about the activity. So what are you doing right now? I'm going to climb. Oh, and where are you going to go? Are you going to go all the way around? That's a lot of hoops to go through. I'm going to climb them all. Are you going to climb like this or like that? Like this. Okay, let me see you do it. Wow, you're quick. You're good at it. Incorporate imaginative play. You can't touch, touch the ground. There's alligators and sharks down here. This is all water. <gasps> I'm standing in the water? Do you think I'm safe? You, you like to climb, but what else do you like to play on? What other equipment do you like? What else do you like around here? Do you like the swings, the slides? What else do you like to do? Swings. <gasps> the swings. Why do you like to swing? Do you like to swing up really high? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. you like that, huh? Or do you just like to swing a little bit? Or really, really high? Really high. You know how to do it that way? You know how to kick your legs and pump? You don't need anybody to push you? You can do it all by yourself? Oh. Mm -hmm. That clip? You saw what happened. There was expansion happening all the time. They were interacting, questions were being asked, responses were happening. 
if she asked me what a word meant, I expanded upon that. It talks about how you feel. Uh, and again, we would take took turns communicating. And that's a way of developing vocabulary. Many words have many meanings. If you're trying to explain information, information associated with one word, there's a lot of different meanings. For example, you take the word table. There's so many definition and meanings associated with that one word. You have to explain how it's used in different contexts. It, and if you, you can't, it's okay, but just keep it in mind because that word will come up again. And you need to explain what it means and all the different ways it has meaning. You can have a kitchen table, coffee table, a periodic table, a math graphic table. You can even, in an English class, have a table. It's at the beginning of a book. So when you're talking about table, like tablespoon, you have to actually fingerspell that. Uh, there's a game. Uh, table, which is used for games. But there, again, my point is there are so many different meanings with that one word table. So you just can't fingerspell it. You need to uh, give it some context. So use that time for vocabulary development. You can show a picture to explain the concept of table. And then you can show another picture of a table, but show that it's the same word, but it, it's a different picture. You can get on the computer and plug it in and see what it comes up for that one single word. But it's, you, you have that opportunity to engage with the child and explain that there are different meanings for one simple word. I have a short clip that I'll share with you, and it's going to show you how you use vocabulary development through opportunities and how you can teach vocabulary in specific terminology. And you can do this within your home. I have a question for you. What is this called? Refrigerator. Refrigerator. And freezer. Or you could do this, R-E-F. Here we have the microwave. Microwave. What do we have here? Hot. Oven. Oven, correct. O-V-E-N. That clip that you just saw, they were in the kitchen and explaining the different things that you would find in a kitchen to include an oven, a microwave, a refrigerator. But did you take note to the, the children? They were signing hot. Actually, one child signed hot. And the teacher said, yes, it can get hot with the temperature. And then they talked about what the oven was used for, baking cookies or maybe even a turkey. But the point is, is it's an opportunity for vocabulary development and to talk about what it means. But it also, you can go in more depth with your explanation. Use that opportunity for understanding. When it comes to language, it is very complex. Absolutely. It's extremely complex. The way to teach language, how to use language, there's not a simple recipe to do all of that. There's no perfect way for, for doing that. But you can teach your child, expose your child as much as you possibly can. You can do it. Now, deaf children obviously can't hear what's around them. But in lieu of that, you can make things visually accessible. Through sign, they see others communicating, utilizing sign, and they see that in their world. You can provide that exposure to the child through conversation. It's critical that they have access to language so they can understand their world. And for them to acquire language, for them to use language on a daily basis. 
I recommend you make your home language rich. Use it day in and day out. Communicate with your child. I have uh, a list of many uh, support systems that are out there. You don't have to do this alone. Feel free to contact these agencies or contact other parents that are in the same situation and kind of collaborate with one another and, and get some ideas and feedback from one another. You could talk with your child teachers, SLP. Talk with others about this and gather some ideas how you can make your home a rich environment for language. You can also take an ASL class. You could uh, meet different people. You can take advantage of the outreach program. You can take workshops or classes. So you can get a better understanding of how you can use language in your home. You can meet deaf people that uh, could be role models. Maybe invite them to your program and talk with them. You can go out in the deaf community. There's plenty of events that you can attend, and you can build that rapport and bond with others. Uh, if they, maybe they don't know sign, uh, if you don't know sign, you can ask the person, how do I explain this particular concept? For example, the dog needed to be put to sleep. Talk to these people that use sign language and figure out how you would explain that. Gather different ways to communicate from others. You have the community out there. It's right at your fingertips. They're more than happy to help, more than happy to share their ideas and support you in this journey. And to wrap up, language is critical. It's a, a, a value. It's for communication. It's for interacting with other people. And again, for building those connections and bonds with people. So take a good look at it to be able to have some insight and to have a better understanding of your surroundings. It's beneficial for development and for understanding ASL or understanding English, for understanding so many things and how to use language. You must have language for all of those things that I have mentioned. I would like to leave you with two quotes. The limits of language are the limits of my world. And the second quote, language is the blood of the soul into which thoughts run and out which they grow. <laughs>